So my name is Girl Shimrov and uh, my teammate is Arseni Poida. And uh, I'm gonna describe you uh, our solution to BERTF 2024. Uh, well, the agenda of my speech is on the slide. Uh, firstly, I will uh, briefly describe our background and then move on to the solution itself. I'll cover data we use, uh, models, uh, some training and inference strategy, and finally, I'll highlight some interesting and important findings. Uh, so let's start. Uh, actually, we uh, received a bachelor's degree in uh, 2022, and uh, this year we uh, received a master's degree. Both degrees are in applied mathematics and physics. Uh, we actually have uh, small experience in uh, competitions. Uh, we started our first competition uh, seven months ago and uh, received two uh, silver medals on Kaggle. Uh, our previous competition is uh, HMS. It was about harmful brain activity classification. It was also related to signals and uh, spectrograms. Uh, and uh, we considered that experience in this competition was really helpful and uh, uh, useful to achieve a uh, great result in BERTF uh, 2024. Uh, well, let's move on to the solution itself. Um, I'll first uh, describe the data we use and how we pre-process it. Uh, actually, we use only data from uh, this CR competition, both train audio and unlabeled soundscapes. Let me start with uh, train audio pre-processing. Um, <clears throat> actually, there are some duplicates in the data, and we uh, drop them using some metadata and uh, the duration of uh, audios. There are also some bad chunks in the data, for example, uh, chunks with no calls or mm, with high level of noise. Uh, discard them manually is a tough task, so we use a uh, little bird vocaliz uh, vocalization classifier. We make pseudo labels and then compare pseudo labels with primary and secondary labels. And if they do not match or for some chunks, we discard such chunks. Uh, also, there are some short audio in the data. In such case, we use a psychic pairing, simple solution. Um, uh, as there are secondary labels apart from primary one, we combine them with equal weights and also use um, kind of uh, label smoothing, uh, adding a uh, small part of several labels. Uh, <clears throat> we use two strategies uh, for folding the data. Uh, firstly, we just uh, use simple five fold. Uh, uh, splitting and uh, notice that uh, the first fold, uh, I mean fold zero, uh, shows the best uh, public score and uh, uh, that's why we conduct the vast majority of our experience on this fold. Uh, but then we also find out that it's a good idea to take 80% of the files with the lowest power. I will cover this idea on the next slide. As for unlabeled soundscapes, uh, well, actually, they have uh, no labels, <laughs> and we have to make uh, some pseudo labels. Uh, for this, we use both uh, Google Classifier and uh, our models. Uh, it's just uh, three efficient nets trained only on train audio. The difference is that we use uh, different folds, and we choose uh, three best folds. I mean, uh, those folds that uh, give the best public score. And uh, we, uh, for every model for the final assembly, we use uh, the whole data, so there is no folding. Well, now let me uh, describe the idea of low power data. Uh, as I've mentioned above, it was really surprising for us that uh, fold zero provides significantly higher score than other folds, and uh, we want to find out the reason. Uh, we try to calculate different statistics, uh, and uh, what we found out is that some statistics uh, related to power, like standard deviation, variation, root mean square, or power itself, uh, for fold null, fold, fold null has a um, low uh, value. And that was just an idea, let's take 80% uh, of all files with the lowest value of some of the statistics, and as a result, we uh, train our model only on this data and uh, 
uh, obtain the same score that fold zero, but the data is uh, is not related with fold zero. And we consider that it's also a good idea to use both fold zero and uh, uh, this uh, splitting with 80%. Uh, well, now let me describe the input for the model. Uh, we use only visual models. So firstly, we calculate uh, mass spectrograms from audio. Uh, the priority of our solution is that we use 10 second chunk as model input. Uh, although the task is to label five second chunk, uh, we use uh, 10 seconds and uh, we just uh, concatenate two adjacent chunks and uh, average uh, their labels. We consider there are some benefits from such an idea. Uh, firstly, we increase the probability to detect chirps. Uh, also, we avoid some crop chirps, uh, like here. And uh, uh, also, we uh, provide the model with some information about uh, chirp uh, period here, as on this picture. With 10 seconds, the model can uh, learn some information about the period. Uh, as for inference, to label five uh, second chunk, we just uh, concatenate it with uh, two and a five, uh, two and um, half seconds of previous chunk and uh, two and a half seconds of uh, the next chunk. Uh, a few words about uh, data augmentation. Uh, sure, we consider uh, a lot of augmentations, even some audio augmentations, but our final solution consists only of these three um, uh, augmentations. It's just taking random 10 second chunk from a file, XY masking, so we mask both uh, frequency and time, and uh, also horizontal cut mix. We just uh, concatenate two um, different spectrograms uh, from a batch. Uh, so uh, now let me move on to, to the models we use. Our final solution is an ensemble of six models, three efficient med B0 and uh, three organetic. Uh, both of them are Trained on ImageNet uh, data set. Uh, <clears throat> actually, we consider other models. Uh, uh, some of them provide us with the same score, like Series Next or EfficientNet B1, B2, and so on. Uh, but uh, well, these models dramatically increase the inference time. That's why we uh, discard them. Uh, some other models, fast or not, for example, some models from previous. Uh, Bertlev competition uh, show lower score for us. That's why we also didn't use it. Uh, <clears throat> now let me describe our training strategy. Uh, also, we consider that it's a peculiarity of our solution that we use cross entropy laws. Although the general the task is multi label, so it's a more common solution to use uh, binary cross entropy laws, uh, but still the Training data is uh, one label. I mean, if each uh, file has one label, uh, or probably when we use data augmentation, it has two labels, but still it's uh, few enough. And that's why we consider that cross entropy loss is better. And uh, our experiments shows that, yes, it's better than binary cross entropy. Uh, as for the parameters here, we use classical uh, ADAM optimizer with cosine linear scalar for learning rate with initial uh, values uh, shown in the slide uh, with pretty few uh, epochs and uh, the data uh, and the batch size uh, of uh, 96. Uh, another. That's it. Uh, the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, he stepped on uh, the idea of splitting audio files. So, um, uh, as you remember, uh, there were uh, two types of files, train audio and uh, unlabeled soundscapes. Uh, so uh, train audio uh, has uh, about uh, 20,000 uh, files. Uh, however, unlabeled soundscapes uh, has only uh, 8,000. So we decided to uh, split uh, the files for, for example, unlabeled soundscapes are uh, long. So we increase their uh, number and uh, reduce the uh, disbalance uh, of two types of data. Uh, 
moreover, uh, more we also increase the number of steps uh, in each uh, epoch uh, for the models. The next slide, please. Um, so uh, here uh, you can see the inference pipeline. Um, it consists of uh, six models, uh, as uh, we said. Uh, the pipeline of one model uh, is presented uh, on the slide. So we uh, take a model uh, and uh, use it for uh, five the adjacent chunks. Uh, then we take uh, uh, some uh, probabilities after sigmoids, uh, and uh, we just uh, average them. Uh, so it's uh, like a smoothing between uh, adjacent chunks. Oh, uh, Kirill uh, reconnected. Or well, we just average them, uh, these chunks. And uh, finally, we have three uh, predictions for uh, the chunk uh, from three uh, models. Uh, and uh, instead of uh, averaging them, uh, our best solution uh, use uh, the minimum function. Uh, so we try to uh, filter uh, some un uh, uncertainty uh, of uh, predictions of our models. Uh, however, we use the uh, averaging uh, function uh, in our sub, uh, submission uh, first place solution uh, because it is uh, it was very strange to use the minimum. However, uh, as we can see, this provides better results. And uh, we use uh, the same pipeline for Rignet uh, models. And finally, we just averaging uh, the uh, predictions. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, here you can uh, see some information about uh, inference and train time. Uh, so uh, we used uh, only uh, kernel, uh, kernels for uh, training, uh, and uh, one uh, model training time uh, is less than uh, two hours. Uh, for to optimize uh, the training, we pre-computed uh, spectrograms, uh, and uh, as I said, we split it large file uh, to speed up uh, the read. Uh, on the inference, uh, we had six models. One model time uh, is about uh, 18 minutes, and uh, finally we use six models uh, with uh, spectrogram computing. Uh, that uh, was uh, and two hours was uh, enough for it. Uh, optimizations uh, for inference are uh, using open Vina, uh, parallel spectrograms uh, computing using uh, Joplib, uh, and uh, putting uh, all spectrograms uh, into the, uh, the RAM. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, uh, finally, uh, some uh, important and interesting uh, finds. Uh, first, uh, that we uh, use 10 seconds instead of uh, five seconds uh, to predict five second chunk. Uh, then, uh, interesting is that cross entropy loss with softmax uh, on the training uh, is uh, really nice for uh, the inference. Uh, if we uh, replace the softmax uh, with sigmoid function. Uh, of course, uh, it was surprising that uh, minimum function instead of averaging uh, for assembling uh, can provide uh, some good results. And um, uh, the first point uh, we didn't mention in the presentation is that uh, Adding a new no-call class improves private score. 
uh, we didn't use that because uh, public score um, uh, was reduced using this. Uh, so uh, it is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Uh, we are ready for the questions.